Imagine giving birth in your house and burying the placenta under your bed or in a specific place of honor in your house. This will be determined by the gender of your baby. That's completely weird for us. However, in the Hmong tradition, it's the natural way. What is weird for a Hmong mother is to give birth in a hospital setting where she is not allowed to keep and bury the placenta. We learn these differences by studying medical anthropology, which is a class that is given here at USC. Now, I took this class last semester, and we read a book called The Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down by Anne Fadiman, which narrates the story of a Hmong family and their experience as an immigrant family at Merced, California, and how they dealt with these medical differences when they had a daughter that was diagnosed with what we would call epilepsy, but in their culture is translated as quag that peg, which means the spirit catches you and you fall down. This book gives a great um, background to study what is ethnomedicine, why is it important, and the lessons that we can learn from it. Now, if you're going to become a nurse or a social worker, it's very important for you to know this difference and to understand uh, your patient as an uh, individual within a culture and social, cultural and social context. If you're not in this path, you will still be a patient one day. So it's important for you to know this concept as well. When anthropologists study medicine in other cultures, they, they're talking about ethnomedicine. But what is it? From the word ethno, meaning race, people, or cultural group, and medicine, which is the science or practice of treatment, diagnose, and prevention of disease, we have ethnomedicine simply as the medical or healing system of a particular group or tradition. We have uh, shamanic medicine, traditional Chinese medicine, Urvardic medicine, and Western medicine, or also called biomedicine. Ethnomedicines evolve and change over time, and they are benefited from or when they complement each other. An example of this is now Western medicine accepting acupuncture, which is part of the traditional Chinese medicine, as complementary treatment for many medical conditions. But I haven't studied ethnomedicine for the last 17 years of my life. How? However, Dr. Pamela Erickson has. That's why instead of telling you why I think it's important, I'm going to share with you her opinion as it was um, posted in a lecture that she gave at the American University of Beirut entitled The Healing Lessons of Ethnomedicines. And she talks about the importance of understanding biomedicine as another way of evaluating and treating disease that can be complemented with other ethnomedicines and how this will only benefit the patient. That's why the example that I gave before, acupuncture being complemented, uh, being a complementary treatment uh, accepted by Western medicine. Also, biomedicine views the patient as a clinical case. However, other ethnomedicines are teaching us that the patient is an individual within a social context, a social and cultural context. And um, it is important to consider their background how many of us have heard of the placebo effect? According to WebMD, research on the placebo effect has focused on the relationship of mind and body. One of the most common theories is that the placebo effect is due to a person's expectations. This relationship between mind and body is well understood while we view the differences between curing and healing. Disease is a state of unbalance a state of unwellness. Curing deals with the solution for a particular sign, a particular symptom. However, healing deals with restoring the balance that was lost. When we talk about curing, we're talking about removing, sur surgically removing a uh, cancerous lesion or giving a specific medicine to lower the temperature or to or an antibiotic to kill the pathogenic um, pathogenic that was pathogenic um, organism that was causing the disease. 
However, when we talk about healing, we're talking about that relationship between mind and body. We're involving the patient's expectations and we are restoring the balance that was lost. Having clarified what ethnomedicine is and having shared the importance of, of, of the relationship between mind and body, uh, we can go back to the lessons that it teaches us as providers, social workers, and healthcare staff in general. Um, and we need to remember a couple of things. First, the patient is not a group of signs and symptoms, but an individual with a cultural context experience in a state of disease. And also, as patients ourselves, we need to understand that the aggressive way of dealing with disease is not the only way. There are other complementary alternatives. Also, because we as patients, this is, are the ones experiencing the disease, it's important for us to get involved in the plan of care and to have our needs, such as psychological and spiritual, taken in consideration in order to achieve healing and not just to be cured. Thank you.